Welcome compadres. Today we're going to empirically derive a stress cycle curve for a certain material. So what is a stress cycle curve? It's essentially going to be based off of cyclic loading. So you have your peak alternating stress on the y-axis and then your number of life cycles on the x-axis. So basically how you read it is on the left if you have a load, a uh, cyclic load on your part that is 25,000 pounds for example well you go start here and then you cross over and you go down and you read your number of life cycles or the expected life cycles that your part will survive so why is this important well it's important for fatigue problems specifically cyclic loading scenarios and vibrations uh, you'll see this a lot in the oil and gas industry as well as the aerospace and defense industry so it's important to understand how to develop this curve because it sets us up for um, uh, more difficult fatigue problems uh, with preloads and uh, that sort of thing. So what goes into this curve? It's really not that complicated. Um, you will have to use knockdown factors. You'll find in literature they got five knockdown factors. A load factor which is based off of whether the material is under bending uh, tension or torsional loading, a surface modification factor which is based off of how the surface was machined, a temperature factor basically it's a knockdown factor for temperature, a gradient or size factor to uh, basically it's an equivalent diameter that you calculate for uh, cross sections that are not circular because these stress cycle curves they're developed um, from cylindrical specimens and uh, so for anything of a different geometry you have to uh, include a size factor and then a reliability factor. So this is a prerequisite for fatigue failure problems and also the Goodman, Gerber and Soderberg failure models that we'll develop as we continue to uh, look at fatigue in this series. So before we get into it um, I want to introduce some terminology that you'll find in literature. It's often confusing, but just keep in mind you need, uh, basically, you, you define two points. So this is the first point you define in the high cycle fatigue region. It's based on the material strength that tend to the third cycles, and it's a function of the material. So, for example, down here, you'll have loading for steels. Um, this is how you would determine your value on the y-axis here at 10 to the third cycles. For bending and torsion loads you'd use this equation for steel and it varies with material so if it's aluminum you're going to have a different set of equations. But we combine bending and torsion into one because we can use von Mises stress um, to convert torsion to an equivalent tensile load and we put that on a bending SN curve. So we don't usually um, You'll see in literature they do have some stuff for torsion equations, but I don't use it because I'll just use von Mises stress uh, when I calculate my loads and then compare it to the bending stress cycle curve. And then also the other important point on here is the endurance limit, which is defined usually with these terms right here. And you can see here um, this curve right here represents our ideal loading stress cycle curve. Well, if we reduce it with our knockdown factors, this point will drop down and you get a new curve. So this is what this equation does. It takes that into account. You multiply all the knockdown factors together against the predetermined endurance limit and you get a new endurance limit based off the, or a knockdown endurance limit. So there you have it guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and step into the Excel spreadsheet to show you how to develop this empirically for aluminum. So here's the spreadsheet that's used to de empirically derive a stress cycle curve for aluminum. Essentially these are your inputs for a stress cycle curve development. You're going to need your ultimate tensile strength of your material. For aluminum 6061 it's 42,000. You're going to need your yield strength of your material. So for aluminum 6061 it's going to be 35,000 psi and then you also have to define your load types for the load factor. So I have bending, axial, and torsion. So there's some logic that goes into it but those are the three cases and then you have to select a surface finish. So there's three surface finishes for stress cycle development, ground, machined, hot rolled, as forged. 
And you can add more if you find it in literature and also a reliability factor so there's a list of those two that you can use and you will select those based on the problem that you have and then the temperature at which you are at which your components going undergoing cyclic loading here I have it in degrees Fahrenheit and then your starting cycles which is going to be 10 to the third and then your endurance cycles for aluminum you usually define your endurance limit of at 5 times 10 to the 8th cycles for steel it's different and then you need an extended cycle so you can plot it on this graph so those are the inputs and then you go through your calculations so the first thing you want to do is to determine your endurance stress so there's an equation for that for aluminum right here this is the endurance limit at 5 times 10 to the 8th cycles and I put in um, a function for that there's some logic tied to it based on the um, ultimate strength of the aluminum that you're looking at uh, we'll go into the code later but that's what you need to put in there and then you have your load factor which it's another VBA function but it's based off the loading scenario so if I change this to axial you're gonna get a different number and it's going to change your stress cycle curve over here so I'll change it back to to uh, torsion I believe it was on and then you have your temperature factor which is given by an equation uh, we'll go into that in the VBA code and there's some logic tied to that and then a gradient factor it's based off the cross-sectional area of your component that's different than a uh, cylinder or a circle for now we're just going to assume one because I don't really have a scenario in mind. Uh, we may change this in upcoming videos based on a real world problem. And then your reliability factor is going to be a function of this reliability that you pick up here. And then we simply to get our new endurance limit or our knock down endurance limit we multiply all these together our ideal endurance limit multiplied by all these five load factors you can see that there real simple and then we need another point here we need to define our stress at 10 to the third cycles and once again um, that's going to be based off of uh, an equation that you find in a textbook for aluminum it's a certain equation um, we'll go into that and then essentially what you do is you plot three points on this graph and so I've essentially just um, plotted these three points one at 10 to the third cycles is our beginning point one at five times 10 to the eighth and then one forecasted out in time so this curve is flat so it's really simple to do guys all you're doing is you're determining three points it's real simple I think the more, most complicated thing is the logic that goes behind this so I'm gonna go ahead and, and open up the code and you can see here um, I'm gonna move this over here we're gonna start at um, the aluminum fatigue strength so that's our endurance limit value so if, um, this is the logic for that if our ultimate strength of our aluminum is greater than 48,000 then we assume that our fatigue strength is 19,000 otherwise we use that equation for surface modification factor which is shown here there's different values um, there's an equation for it but there's different values based on whether your material is grounded machined hot rolled or as forged you basically you feed it these parameters a and b and then you put it in this equation and uh, then you calculate a surface modification factor and uh, so it depends on the case that you select up here machined hot rolled as forged and then your temperature factor it's an equation based on the operating temperature and you can see here it's real simple to do this equation came out of a textbook it uses if then logic real simple and then you have a reliability factor uh, essentially created two arrays here a reliability percentage and then a um, 
reliability factor that corresponds to those percentages. So at 50% reliability, you assume 1, at 90, 0.87, so on and so forth. And what it, this does is I pass in the reliability value, which is given right here in this drop down box and it changes the value based on that so we can see it in live right now so if I change it to 99 it changes to 0.814 if I change it to 90 it's going to change it to 0.897 so that's what this code does it goes through loops through and uh, determines your reliability factor based off what you input here and then your load factor is based off of bending axial and torsion given in this box. So if I select axial, changes to 0.7. And then the load type, obviously um, at 10 to the third cycles uh, for aluminum, it's going to be based off of these equations right here. Um, so if you're bending or torsion, then you apply this equation. If it's axial, then you apply this equation. So guys, that's it. Um, that's how you develop the spreadsheet. And ultimately, your goal is to develop this thing right here, your stress cycle curve. You can change these values, and it'll update the stress cycle curve. For example, if I change this load type to axial, it'll lower the curve. And then you can change machine, as forge, hot rolled. Um, it'll change a little bit, slightly. You can't really see the changes reflected on the scale, but it does change because the surface modification factor changes. And then you can change the reliability, and it'll change the curve. So that's how it works, guys. Um, I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Adios.